For those of you that may have never been here, let me give you a quick rundown how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. <coughs> Someone from staff will come to the lectern and give us the request. There will probably be questions and discussions while they are being, while that person is presenting it. Once we have heard that, then I will ask if there are any persons here in support or if the applicant is here and would like to give us additional information. Once we've heard from that side, then we will ask if there is any person here in opposition or if someone has questions about what's being requested. Generally, we make a recommend, I mean, uh, uh, we resolve the matter here today. However, if we feel like parties need to talk or information is lacking, we do have the rules and our bylaws that allow us to postpone acting on it until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, first case we'll call is VAR 2013-18, Lowndes County case. ANS signs on behalf of Darmish Patel. Mr. Chairman, before we go much further, just a reminder for folks to sign in at the back yes, of the room. Yes, please, if you have not signed our attendance sheet in the back, please do so. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, members of the board. Our first case before you today is a request to modify an existing non-conforming sign. The subject property is, consists of 0.39 acres and is formerly known as the Old Shoney's Restaurant um, location. ANS signs is proposing to modify an existing non-conforming sign as to change the size and its shape. There on the screen there you see what the sign looks uh, looks like existing and on the right is the proposed um, elevation of the sign. What makes this sign unconforming is that of its height. At, at this location, the maximum height of a sign can only be 35 feet and the applicant uh, sign is currently at 80, 80 feet. The modification would be take down the top cabinet where, where it reads Shoney's and to replace it with a Motel 6 cabinet. Um, as you can see, the sign will be um, lesser in square footage um, and, and brought more into conformity um, with our regulations as some of the staff sees it. As you can see in your staff report, there was quite a bit of debate um, among staff um, with regards to the recommendation, but we ultimately um, render a recommendation of approval, um, citing the criteria D of the standards. Um, some of the debate, the debate was centered around, you know, the applicant just using what was there existing versus um, constructing or erecting a new cabinet. So there's a recommendation of approval from staff to, um, to allow the applicant to modify the sign. Any questions? Any discussion?
somebody came in and tried to open another uh, operation in the Shones building, they cannot have two freestanding signs on that property. That's correct. So any signage that they would that they might do would have to be pretty much on that pole. They would have to come back before us again. If they use the existing cabinet, that little cabinet that reads um, express, yes. If they use that cabinet to change out the um, panels in it, they wouldn't have to come before you all. But if they wanted to enlarge that panel or modify it, they would have to come back before the side. But if that, <coughs> that box was taken off that sign because it was not being used and was no longer there, and then came, somebody came back and wanted to put another box back up there. Could not do it. They would have to come back before us. That's correct. And if they came in, and like I said, if they came in and wanted to not put a sign on that hole but have a sign of their own, that's prohibited because you can't have two signs on a single parcel. Right. Unless it's a commercial center, shopping center with X amount of road money. Any other it's questions? That they are going to remove it. And we can put that as a condition of approval um, or, yes, as a condition of approval. Any other questions or discussions? Anyone here in support of the misapplication? Yes, sir. Let me get your name and address for the record, even though we know who you are. Yes, sir. <laughs> My name is Jason Weisenbaker, and I live at 3523 Newsom Road, Valdosta, Georgia. Thank you all for letting us come before you. Uh, I think I can answer most of the questions. Uh, when this thing was originally put up, uh, this was for the Shoney's restaurant. This was for the Shoney's Inn. And they, uh, since Shawnee's restaurant has gone out of business and Darmesh is, is actively trying to market that to get somebody in there, uh, and he now has a the brand now is called Stay In and Sleep, but he would like to change it to a Motel 6. Well, Motel 6 requirement, they have to be on the top. So what, we're, what we would like to do is take the Shawnee's down conform it with the Motel 6 sign, have this particular cabinet available for the restaurant and remove that. Uh, it's what we would like to do. What are you planning on doing with the lower cabinet in the meantime? For the okay, that, you're talking about this one? When you say lower, are you talking about now this no, one or this one? I'm talking about the, the, the just that, that. black it out. Or just black it out. In other words, the face will be black. So, according to this, it says of note, the bottom cabinet closest to the ground level will be removed. You're talking about that small. Right? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Right. This one. That one there. That brings us pretty close to the to the rakes. Is that on the same pole? Yes, ma'am. All three of them are on there right now. Any other questions or discussion? Thank you. Anybody else in here in support would like to give us any additional information? I'm uh, Eric Thompson. I'm the lender on this transaction with Guardian Bank. And just to give you a little update, you know, we're doing the loan on this. And it's a full Motel 6 renovation package. So he's spending a significant amount of money to renovate that whole hotel. So it's going to be a nice hotel in Lake Park versus what it sits today. And as far as having that second tier, Sign. The reason we want that there is because obviously we're trying to market that Shoney's restaurant, which is vacant right now, so obviously we're trying to get IHOP or some of these other franchises to come in there. But having that sign already up there, it improves the marketability of that product. So, you know, like, like Jason said, we'll just black it out, but say IHOP came in there, we could just basically change out those spaces from black to whatever new restaurant came in there. So that's the reason why we like to have that as part of the package. Any other, any other presentation from, is anyone here in opposition to this request or is anyone here has any questions about what is being requested? 
Were there any response to your office? No, no. no sir. Ladies and gentlemen, any other questions or discussions before we discuss it a little more or before I call the question? So the owner understands, though, that should a national tenant or somebody come in to that showing and they dictate what sign size and all that has to be done, I mean, we've seen that time and time again. If your tenant comes in and says, we'll take this property, but you've got to use our sign and this guy, this guy I mean, we don't, I personally, I can't speak for everybody else, but I don't want to see this again as somebody coming in and wanting to do a twice as large sign on the bottom of the Motel 6, I mean, and that second cabinet down. So, I mean, I, I just, like I said, I can't speak for everybody else, but for me personally, just make sure y'all understand that what we're approving is that size, and um, I mean, in the future, I mean, you need to tell potential tenants that that's what they've got to work with. God, I would agree with that, but you also know that if somebody comes in and says, well, could I ask for a variance, we would have to say, that's well, right. yeah, you can. That's right. So, uh, but we would tell them we've already got a variance to get where we are. Your chances are not very good, but we couldn't tell them they couldn't. Right. right. You can't tell them they can't come out. Okay. Did I entertain a motion? I think a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve citing Cartier D as presented in the paperwork. I have a second from Scott. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Good luck with the guys. Hope Thank you. works out. Appreciate it. Okay, next case, city case, application 2013-15, Mike Woolsey, 1328 North St. Augustine Road. Hello, Tracy. Good afternoon, how are y'all? We're fine. Okay, this is a property that you've seen in the past few months or so. The it is located at 1328 North St. Augustine Road. It, is, it currently has the existing Denny's on the property. Zone Highway Commercial. You can see the aerial. Current Denny's with its affiliated park. The reason you're seeing this, now keep in mind the previous variance that you, that you received or that you reviewed earlier was related to the exterior facade for a metal type of tube. Plans for Denny's are in route. They are currently being processed. The reason you're seeing the variance now is if you'll remember, they have a pad for a second restaurant. Currently a hurricane grill and wings. That second restaurant is moving forward and they have hopes of building. Currently, under existing regulations, they do not have enough parking, which is why you're seeing the variance. Between the two restaurants, the two proposed, well, the existing Denny's says, well, the Denny's that went through the plan process and the Hurricane Grill and Wings as proposed, you're looking at a combination of 118 parking spaces. The plan as proposed has 66, which is why you're reviewing the variance. Staff has reviewed your request, and unfortunately, we couldn't find the hardship, so we're recommending. I got a question. Yes, sir. Are they the same owner? That own the two parcels? That um, it's all on the same parcel. Two same owners. That I don't know. The the representative from the applicant is here, and he can answer that question better than I. Yeah, we'll answer <coughs> that question in a second. It's all right. Sure. Okay. Any questions for staff? Um. <clears throat> there is a possibility in the zoning um, and parking regulations uh, that allows for them, if they could, to cap to use adjacent spaces, can't they? That is a, it is a potential under a couple of different circumstances. If they're adjacent property, if the adjacent properties have enough to share, and if the adjacent property owners will sign authorization. Okay. So you, what you're saying is, if they have a cross parking easement of record, which runs with the land for not, future not, use, not necessarily an easement. Just like a shared parking agreement with Bob Doe, who's, who owns the property next door, they can do it for an easement. But if Bob Doe next door says, yes, you can, we'll share 15 parking spaces or X number, we will work with that as well. Yeah, in, in the past, it's normally been just 
a letter that we put in the file that says these three people are agreeing to share all of the joint spaces in this one area as opposed to a you know like a full big legal document. What happens if the uh, future buyers don't get along? Then that might be a problem. <laughs> and they don't have, I mean, if you can settle it right now, if you have a cross party deal. Right. That's not that, that, that would not run right. with the land and you wouldn't have any problems right. with later on future right. owners of the adjacent lots. Right. No, future. Yeah, that's, right. that's the one flying the arm, yes. I'm always picking out that stuff. I understand. I was looking out for potential problems. That's what you're supposed to do. I'm telling you. Okay. Anything else, Tracy? No. Any questions or discussions for Tracy at this time? Tracy, no. The bottom spaces that we're seeing outside the what looks like the property line, right? those across the bottom, those are not included in the 66, right? You're correct. I'm trying to count them up. Just here. But, okay. but it does look like the property beneath this has drive access through this this piece of property. I believe it does. Yes, I Access easement. Okay, no other questions, discussions for, for staff at this time. Is the applicant here, would you like to give us any additional information? Mike Wolsey uh, with Remick Restaurants, we're the owners and operators of the existing dentist. And I've been before you for a sign out at the new intersection <clears throat> and for the metal clad building. And thank you for that. Uh, a couple of questions that were asked. I'll lay those to rest real quick. It is one owner of both properties. I suppose we could sell a business and retain a lease, but I, I don't see that as possible unless we replant. I'm not asking for anything. It, it's going to be one property owner. And you know, the possibility is we could go out of the business and somebody else could, you know, one could buy one and the other could retain the other. But there would have to be one major landlord, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. And then the second issue is uh, the question was uh, uh, there are two cross access agreements one on the east side of the property, one on the west side of the property, and they bring them in through the two. But there's a second entrance on the closest side to I-75. Okay. That's an ingress egress easement. Yes, sir. Not cross parking easement, right? No, no, I did not represent it. No, they're just cross access easements. Both of them. Right. To get to the to yeah. get to the supermarket. And, 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 and those have been in existence for quite some time. Uh, prior to us owning the property, uh, and prior to the development of the uh, of the, uh, the two motels that are back. I, I know it was in existence when we bought it in 2001, so it was on our asphalt survey, our ALTA survey, excuse me. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to add was that uh, based on the existing condition of, of a 6,600 square foot building being there, <clears throat> we uh, originally looked at, I think I told you this last time I was here about the metal plant building. We, looked at renovating that entire building. <clears throat> and there was a way that we could come up with approximately 300 seats of both Denny's on one side and uh, this Hurricane Grill, or, or whatever other concept there could be. And, and by the way, Hurricane Grill and Wings is mostly, it, it, it's a chicken wing restaurant, but it has a full menu. Okay? And uh, uh, we looked at renovating the building and basically making two sides, and they could share parking, they could share restrooms, they could share uh, utilities, whatever. And basically, the two businesses are owned by the same uh, entities, okay? The, the, you know, multiple corporations and what have you, but they're uh, uh, Remick Corporation, Hurricane Grill and Wings are two separate corporations, but the same people are on the same, are on the boards, et cetera. Uh, so we could net about 300 seats 6,600 feet. The site plan you see in front of you is maybe six or 800 square feet larger in area, the two buildings are than the existing building. And we're proposing 
right at the same number of seats. Okay, so that that was the reason that we felt that there there was some uh, hardship, if you will. You know, I'm, I'm not redefining the word hardship or anything, but but if, if this, then that type of thing. And um, uh, we would essentially keep the the same amount of seats because the diner that I showed you two months ago, I think it was, is about 98 seats, and the Hurricane Gorilla Wings is right at 200. Uh, inside the structure, there's only about 160, 100, maybe 164 or something like that, and there's some seats outside, but the outdoor area isn't calculated for parking because the code requires gross square footage of the closed area. Leave that as it may, uh, there's, there's still 200 or so uh, seats inside that, or, you know, within that business, in general, call, rather than standing inside, inside and outside the structure. So, in, in our way of looking at it, we have about the same number of seats that we would have in the renovated structure. And I told you before that the reason we would be doing this is to go and, and have a more efficient, energy efficient business and and and, and essentially uh, you know, make a better situation for all involved. The uh, it is not possible. We have tried. It is it, it is not an option for us to get a cross parking letter. Okay? It, it is not it has been discussed, it has been negotiated and there are issues that I can't resolve, that the corporation that owns our property can't resolve, and issues that the other side 